Hello again. Welcome to this week's series on the gut. That's what we're talking about. Leaky Gut Syndrome Part 2. Oh, isn't this exciting? Well, it is for me. Because this is really where it all starts and how you are really going to heal. So this week, we're going to get a little bit deeper. Last week, we talked about the causes. Remember, we said drugs are a major piece of this. Uh, foods uh, like uh, gliadin, which is gluten, GMOs, huge killer. And just our typical American diet that that has got to change. All the processed additives, colorings, preservatives, chemicals, uh, heavy metals that we're consuming on a daily basis that our ancestors never consumed. We're exposed to more chemicals on a daily basis. It's just unbelievable. Next week we're going to get into toxicity and it's just... it's. It's just really sad. We've just kind of destroyed our world in many ways. We said that there's testing available, and that's available. You can actually order some uh, the Cyrex test and some of the Genova tests from our uh, store if you do want to go that way. Sometimes testing is beneficial, especially for sensitivities. When a child has to go to school and you have to say, okay, we have to stay off gluten, and you need that uh, documented uh, in order for some enforcement to take place. It also helps with children where parents might have some disagreements of whether uh, or not uh, you know there's some there's full support at home. So many times testing is um, is necessary. We do it a lot less than we used to in the office because uh, I can rely on kinesiology testing in my office. And remember. Take that intestinal permeability, that leaky gut test that we created for you at the My Hope online website. So, how are we going to heal this? Well, in healing everything, remember, this is my huge thing here, is we got to find out why we got to remove the cause. So, when we talk about removing the cause, is uh, some of the other testing that we're going to talk about. So, looking at our two, and finally we're going to talk about our three diets that um, are our trademark diets. The My uh, Eden diet and the My Covenant diet is a good place to start. Again, the My Eden diet, look at the information on the uh, My Nutrition section of, um, of our program. The My Eden diet is a plant-based diet. The My Covenant diet is a uh, diet that is not plant-based. So, not plant-based alone. But both of them start with the basis, the first step of eating a whole food diet. And, and then as you go through both, um, climb up the mountain of both of these diets, you are eliminating different foods. And uh, so this can all be done without the expense of detailed testing. You don't need to do uh, gluten testing and other antibody testing and food testing that could get quite costly. That's just honestly just not necessary. You can make some assumptions and make some trials. You just don't want to make the mistake of thinking that it's going to, you know, the changes are going to take place overnight. If you have the cause of one of the causes of your leaky gut, let's say gluten, we're going to get into this in depth later, but. If gluten is the cause of my leaky gut, I've had patients that come in and say, yes, I tried going gluten-free for three months or six months or three weeks, and it just didn't seem to make the difference. Well, if you have antibodies to a peptide of gliadin or the entire gliadin uh, uh, protein molecule, those antibodies are going to stay in your system for years. So going gluten-free or going dairy-free for a week or two weeks, is you, you many times will notice very little difference. So um, we go through that with the diets. So just follow that along. But always when you're healing the gut, it starts with what you're putting in there. So you can't be putting bad stuff in there and thinking that you're going to heal it with the next steps that we're going to talk about. You can't be eating McDonald's every day and then think that you're going to build up the walls with a good nutrient pill or something like that. just doesn't work that way. Secondly, we want to rebuild the walls with um, the dietary changes that step up 
into the covenant in the Nehemiah diet. Ultimately, our peak diet is termed the Nehemiah diet. And again, we named it the Nehemiah diet because biblically, the prophet Nehemiah was sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem so that uh, the the uh, God's covenant people could go home to Jerusalem. There's no way that they could go home with all the walls completely destroyed from their exile. So Nehemiah was sent to rebuild the walls. So we thought, oh, that's a perfect name for exactly what we need to do in the gut, rebuild that barrier, and in the brain, rebuild that barrier in order for a person to achieve health. There's so many, so many likes in the Bible that just point us back to exactly what we're supposed to do. We also like to rebuild the walls with very specific nutrients. I'm not going to go through all these in detail, but glutamine, aloe, uh, quercetin are, are three uh, huge ones that work very well. Modified citrus pectin works very well. Uh, licorice root works very well. Sli slippery elm works very well. You can also use something called PRPs, proline-rich peptides, that have found some great research in, in decreasing inflammation in the gut and allowing those cells to reheal. Now again, none of these are going to work if you're going to continue to eat McDonald's. It's just not going to work that way. You're going to be fighting an endless battle. But they can still help. So if I'm still on a medication that's damaging my gut and I can't get off that medication for one reason or another, you adding these nutrients to your diet, maybe they may have to be in a greater um, uh, uh, milligram source, uh, can be very helpful even if you can't get off some of those things. We use a product by Designs for Health called GI Revive and or a product by New Medica called GI Restore. There are some, these are both in powder, they all, they both come in capsule form too. There's a number of other products on the market also you can use that have those different nutrients in it. So you're certainly not limited to these two companies, but these are available in our store. We need to repopulate the gut as well with both pro and prebiotics. Prebiotics are things that can help probiotics, can help the environment so that probiotics, that means the macronutrients, the, the macrobiotica that is living symbiotically or quote-unquote is supposed to be living symbiotically in your gut, can uh, in fact live. They have a, po they have a, a, a good um, nutrient source for them to thrive. And in this little picture, there's some foods that are very high in prebiotics that, that give a healthy gut source. Now, these are all in the Edens and Covenant diet and the Nehemiah diet as well. The probiotics are adding different uh, probiotic strains to your back to your diet. Now, you could do this with fermented vegetables also, but we don't get into that in depth until the Nehemiah diet because there's some dangers in just going to, I'm going to start eating a lot of fermented vegetables because I heard a lot about that. Well, they could be inflammatory as well and can spark a histamine reaction, so you have to be careful about that. So I suggest that we start with probiotics. So different probiotics, these are three that we use from Designs for Health that are different strains. Um, there are several other good probiotics. We actually have in our office multiple different strains of probiotics, and I think there's a benefit to switching strains. So whatever strain you have, if you have a probiotic at home, use that and then switch to a different company or a different strain within that company so that you're getting different strains. Remember, there's 100 million different symbiotic organisms that are living within your gut, and just because you have 15 million or uh, or whatever in, of eight strains that you're getting in a capsule, it, you, we were just far from from uh, where we need to be anyhow. So, don't ever think that you you're uh, doing everything with probiotics. There's more radical approaches that we use in our office for people that have uh, very sick guts. That is ulcerative colitis, um, Crohn's disease. 
they need some more radical approaches, and this has to do with the fecal transplant. So we're not going to get into that into this discussion because there's no way that we could do this and do it justice online. This is a whole discussion in itself, but I know it sounds horribly gross, but it can be just absolutely life-changing and uh, life-giving uh, as an approach to getting that microbiotica reestablished in a person from a donor's microbiotica. And uh, it, it just goes back to uh, when you lose that, that symbiotic environment of those, um, all those probiotic nutrients that are supposed to be in your gut, it just, you know, everything falls apart. We also use in our office frequency healing. This is something that's also available through our store, too. We use the Rife. This is the true Rife machine that you see in this picture. Uh, but especially when you're dealing with viruses, bacteria, uh, other pathogens that are invading the gut, and that is one of the causes. When we talked about causes before, we were mainly talking about chemical causes. Uh, in a later discussion, we are going to talk about uh, biotoxic causes. Uh, and uh, that is a huge issue with causing um, leaky gut and, and, uh, and issues, especially gram-negative bacteria. So uh, many times the only way that you can kill them, especially if the person has moved into an autoimmune situation where they're Th1 dominant, you can't give things that would normally kill um, a bacteria or kill a um, pathogen in the person's body. So you have to resort to frequency healing. We've seen absolutely miracles. We've been using Rife technology for 16 years now in our office, and literally um, people that uh, should have died didn't die and lived a long life. It's just miracle after miracle. So a person comes to us with Lyme disease or uh, struggling with cancer, you, 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 you can't be a, a member of our clinic without uh, um, uh, agreeing to go home with a Rife machine and you're using it on a nightly basis. So a Rife machine could be a, a life-giving uh, device for people with any type of biotoxin issues, Lyme issues, H. pylori issues, and cancer. So don't overlook this piece, especially if you're struggling with the, you've done many of these steps. Because I know a lot of people in this program are going to be at a lot of different stages. Some, this is all new to them, and they have to listen to this over and over again. But I'm trying not to go too slow or even speak too slowly, because I know there's a lot of people that have done all this already. And they're like, I just, I just need the next step. I just need what am I supposed to do? Well, this may be the step that you've completely missed. So there's a number of different frequency healing tools out there. Uh, we solely use the True Rife. So uh, if you purchase it through our store, it comes with my programs on it. You can certainly purchase it through Micah True Rife too. He's a wonderful guy and he just loves to help people. So, um, uh, great thing. Don't overlook that. Healing the gut is also, you have to look at decreasing stress. There's a number of mouse studies out there about putting a mouse in a, they, uh, experiments putting mice in stressful situations, and it just completely destroyed their gut flora. So, uh, now it's hard to do those studies. Uh, and they haven't at least been funded on humans yet, but, uh, but you could, they're pretty equivalent. Increasing stress decreases gut flora, increases leaky gut issues. So um, de doing things to decrease stress is essential. I'm not going to talk about that much more. And lastly, you got to remember that this is a process. I alluded earlier that taking something out of your diet or trying to make changes and thinking that you're going to have this wonderful success in three to six weeks is sometimes it happens, but many times it just doesn't. You have to heal. So your intestinal cells reproduce a new cell about every 12 weeks. So you got to put yourself at least on a 12 week cycle when you're trying to do something and make changes. So it's just, you just can't overcome 40 years of insult in in a quarter, you know, uh, of a year and, uh, and be realistic. So understand that life's a process and there's just 
there's literally thousands and thousands of biochemical processes that are going on when you're making changes that that need to heal so give yourself some patience uh, next week we're going to get into toxicity and some not biotoxins but chemical toxins that we may have to deal with these are into causes here uh, and if we don't deal with these chemical toxicities um, we could be chasing our tail too so that's going to be a great piece next week so stay tuned on that make sure you take that test for intestinal permeability and any other quizzes that we have online this week too all right i will see you next week <laughs>